Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to be back. And uh, uh, right, uh, trust everyone's doing well. Uh, so let's get into our time of study uh, from lifestyle evangelism. Uh, we cover. We have covered two chapters up to now. Right. We looked at chapter one, where uh, we talked about the urgency, the necessity about sharing Jesus. Then we also looked at chapter two last week, which is powerful because it talked about the gospel of Jesus Christ and how the message of the cross and the power of the gospel uh, is more than enough to bring a person uh, into salvation, right? Uh, yes, God has given us other methods as well. We can share testimonies. We can, uh, you know, there's even through songs and, uh, but the core of Christianity and our message is the message of the cross. Uh, you know, even as we minister to people, even in, uh, uh, in smaller settings or in bigger settings, it is important to remember that the message or the gospel is not shared if the cross has not been mentioned. Right. Uh, so there is power in the gospel. We also looked at last week the Greek word sozo. Uh, now, this was uh, we looked at, you know, it's a power packed word. It's not just, OK, salvation. It, it's, it's being healed, delivered, victorious uh, to to uh, be, to uh, overcome, overcome from the works of the devil. Uh, and sozo is for everyone each and every one of us. So uh, we looked at all of this last week. We also looked at uh, presenting the gospel in five minutes, uh, the four spiritual laws, right? Uh, and we also remember mentioning that, okay, don't have the points with you always. Okay, I should follow this. It's just certain guidelines that you can use as, uh, you, know, get, as you get an opportunity to evangelize. And we also looked at the two minute uh, example, which is sharing your experience and praying for people's needs, right? Uh, so we will continue from chapter three on power and love. Now, uh, I will continue teaching. If you have questions, feel free to stop me. Uh, or if you have questions, if you want to put it up on the chat, you can also put it up there and we'll try our best to answer it. All right. So you're ready for chapter three? Everyone with me? Yes, Pastor. Yes. Okay. All right. So we looked at all of this. Now we looked at an urgency necessity. We looked at the power of the gospel, right? Now we have to learn to minister in power and in love, right? Why is it? Because, you know, sometimes uh, when we are so zealous for God, right, uh, we may end up ministering without wisdom, right? Meaning we may, uh, you know, it happened to me at when once I became a believer at a young age, you know, I started saying, you know, God is going to bring, you know, God is going to do this. You have to sit and pray. You're watching TV, you'll go to hell, you know, those kind of things. Uh, uh, but over the years, I realized that as we minister to people, it is very important to minister in power and love. Right. So the crux or the, uh, the foundation of us sharing the gospel should be out of love and out of, in the power of God. Right. So that's what we will look at in this chapter. So uh, we're going to be reading quite a few scriptures this class. So I request uh, uh, maybe a few of us uh, to just uh, immediately start reading the verses so that we don't lose on time. Right. So the Lord Jesus himself went about preaching, teaching, healing, delivering, working of miracles, all of this he did. And he did this out of compassion and love, right? So Jesus did not do all of this to become popular. He did not do all of this to gain, become famous or uh, so that he can be greater than the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Or, or he didn't do it even to start a movement, right? He, he did these miracles, these teachings and healings and deliverance only because he had compassion on people, right? And that was the drive of Jesus's ministry. And that should be the drive for us as well. So let's look at two scriptures here. 
Matthew chapter 15 and verse 32. Could one of us uh, please read that? Matthew 15, verse 32. Matthew chapter 15, verse 32. And Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel compassion for the people because they have remained with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry for they might faint on the way. Thank you, John. So we see here that uh, Jesus said, Jesus shows compassion here. Now, it's interesting to, uh, you know, if you look at the background of this whole scenario, uh, you know, the people are flocking behind Jesus because Jesus is doing these wonderful miracles. He's healing the sick. He's healing the uh, lame and people are getting delivered. Demons are fleeing. But not many of them accept him as the Messiah. So if you read even in the book of John, they followed Jesus, not that, okay, he's a Messiah, but they followed him because, okay, this man is doing wonderful miracles. And, uh, you know, it was to satisfy their own need. And Jesus knew that, right? It was not like Jesus didn't know. He knew that the people are following him because they wanted a miracle. They wanted healing. Uh, but yet Jesus ministered out of compassion. Right? He did not say to them, I know why you all are following me. I know why you all of you are just coming behind me and, uh, uh, you know, uh, been with me for three days now. I know why. you're." Lo he didn't mention any of it. All he did was he ministered in compassion. He said, these people have been with me for so long. Uh, I can't send them away this way. Uh, and he, you know, uh, made a way to provide for them. Let's read Mark chapter 6 and verse 34. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. Okay. So he had compassion on them again, right? It's the same crowd. It's the same people. He had compassion on them. Now, what is it? What is important is when we are ministering to people, right? God may give us opportunities, right? People from different faiths. Remember that we must minister out of love and compassion, right? If we have this in mind saying that, okay, I want to win this soul so that he comes to church or I want to win, I, I want uh, to win this soul so that, you know, uh, my friends may know. Now, these are wrong reasons. Uh, to minister to people, right? The right reasons would be when we are ministering to people, we are to minister out of compassion and out of love, right? The second aspect we see is Jesus ministered in power, right? Uh, let's read John chapter 14, uh, just a couple of verses, uh, maybe 1 to 8. John chapter 14, 1 to 8. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Amen. Thank you, John. So, uh, he, you know, in the book of John, he goes on later to say, uh, greater things than the things that I did, you will do. Right. Uh, and, and so we see that Jesus is encouraging his disciples and he's trying to tell them, OK, we are to minister out of the power that has been bestowed upon us. Right. He says greater things than what I did, you will do. Right. And Luke chapter 24, 46 to 49. Let's read that. 
Luke chapter 24, 46 to 49. Luke chapter 24, 46 to 49. And he said, Yet it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations, beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of all of sins for all who repent. Thank you, Jafina. Yeah, so we see here that Jesus is giving this mandate to his disciples and he's saying, listen, don't worry, I'm going to bestow you with power. He does the same thing in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He says, you will receive power to be my witness. Right now, think about this. Picture this in your minds. Right. The disciples are all afraid. Jesus has been crucified. He's dead. And now the disciples are afraid. They don't know what to do. He resurrects. Jesus resurrects from the dead. Now, all of a sudden, Acts in Acts, uh, the Pentecost happens and the power of the Holy Spirit falls upon everyone. We did mention this earlier, but just picture this. Peter and maybe some of the other disciples as well, they were all afraid. But after the power of the Holy Spirit, after the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, what happened? The same people who were fearful were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit where Peter begins to stand in front of everyone and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right Now, here's one thing that we should always know. We cannot minister or evangelize or share the gospel without the power of the Holy Spirit. How do we know that? Because Jesus himself mentions it. In John chapter 20, verse 22. Can one of us read that, please? John chapter 20 and verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Yes, thank you, John. So Jesus, in this context, John 20, 22, Jesus has resurrected. He's meeting his disciples. And what did he do? He blew on them the Holy Spirit. right? And he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. But a couple of days later, he says, Go to Jerusalem and wait. Don't go and start your ministry, right? Go and wait in Jerusalem. I will pour out my spirit and I will clothe you in power and you will be my witnesses. So what was the difference? Here Jesus has you know, blown on them the Holy Spirit. Wasn't that enough for them to go and start evangelizing and doing the ministry? But Jesus says, no, go and wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So remember this. That when we are in ministry and as whatever we want to do, we need the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit to clothe us so that we may be able to, you know, defend and fight the works of the enemy. Right? We need that. Remember this one time in the city of Mangalore, uh, you know, we used to go out and do outreaches and, you know, I love outreaches. I just love going out and ministering and just giving out tracks. And uh, I enjoy it, right? It's not a burden for me. I enjoy it. I love doing it. So so I keep going every now and then. And if you know, the city of Mangalore is, it's got a lot of uh, uh, Hindu influence, uh, dominance, I could say. Uh, so there was this one time when, uh, you know, we were giving out tracks and uh, you know, a gang of like five, six people just surrounded me and started saying, oh, what are you doing here? Uh, you know, you can't do this. You're making India uh, like America. And he was not making sense, but uh, he was saying things like that. And at the first moment, I mean, you know, uh, it's easy to read the scripture at home and preach the word in the church. It's easy to do all of that, right? Uh, and now in the street, and nobody cares whether you're a pastor. Nobody cares about all of that. How many sermons you preach? Nobody's going to ask you all that. You got like five, six people just surrounding you, and uh, you know, just waiting to just pounce on you. Uh, 
Um, and all of a sudden, this fear just came into me, right? A, a, a feeling of fear. Okay, uh, I'm. I'm. Uh, this is my time. And uh, at that moment, I said, "Holy Spirit, help me." Right? And I got this verse: "I have clothed you in power." Right? And I said, "Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world." So the Holy Spirit just, you know, gives you these verses, and all of a sudden. That fear was just removed, right? It, it was just gone, right? And I just became normal. And I said, this is what I'm doing. I'm on the street. I'm not coming to any private property. Uh, and I'm just sharing. Uh, I'm just giving out. We have an event, a worship event. So I'm giving out these tracks. Uh, if you want, you can call the police as well. And then they, you know, they said, they tried to, you know, instill fear into me. But they saw that I was not fearful. Um, and then they just, you know, just walked away. Here's the thing. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to evangelize. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, you may come across the situation, uh, but it could even be your friend. It could be any person, uh, your, your colleague at your workplace. Whatever it is, we need the power to minister the gospel, right? Uh, Acts chapter 5 and verse 32, let's read that. Acts chapter 5, verse 32. Acts chapter 5, verse 32. We are witness of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey Him. Amen. So, Peter is saying, we are witnesses of these things by the power of God given to us, right? And and so, as we go about in this ministry, we are to as we be witnesses. We are witnesses because of the power of God in our lives, right? I'm reminded of this book I read plenty many years ago, maybe in the year two thousand and three, four, something. Like that. During that time, the name of the book is called "The Cross and the Switchblade." Uh, some of you may have heard the book. Uh, by uh, brother Pastor David Wilkerson, and it's a powerful book. Uh, they made a movie out of it also later on, uh, The Cross and the Switchblade. It talks about these, you know, these gangsters, hardcore criminals, and this young man, maybe about 27 years old, uh, this pastor, uh, you know, he was in a small town, had a small church, but uh, God, somewhere in his heart, he felt, I need to go to New York City and do a ministry there. So he left his wife and small child. He went to New York to scout the place. And he came across this whole, you know, gang wars and drug addicts. And and he remained there. And he was a very thin, skinny man. Uh, uh, but what he did was he ministered in power. When you read the book, you know, one of the gang members said, uh, you know, I can kill you right now. And he said, you can kill me, but then uh, you can kill me. You can cut me into pieces, but still I will love you because the Lord Jesus loves you and died for you. And that opened a door for this, you know, hardcore criminals, right? Uh, and they accepted the Lord. Uh, and many lives were touched. And if you can, you should read the book. The book is better than the movie. Uh, but But what is it? You know, the man who uh, was in the gang and, um, you know, uh, he testifies later saying that the preacher was a thin man, very weak looking. But every time he would preach, we had guns, we had things with us. We felt powerless when we stood next to him. Why was that? And he says later on, we felt even with our guns, we felt we had no power. We felt that he's stronger than us. And that's what made this person even more angry, you know, but later on, he says he realized that it was the power of the Holy Spirit clothed in power of the Holy Spirit that this pastor uh, was evangel it was ministering in the power of God that even the gang members were afraid. Right now, here's the thing. Uh, we are to remember that, you know, in our ministry, in our walk with God, how do we receive this power? We are to pray. We are to read the word. We are to spend time in, in God's presence, right? It's like drawing from God. Say, God, anoint me more. Fill me more. 
right? Uh, we're all in the classes, listening to a lot of classes, and uh, you know, it shouldn't be knowledge. Like knowledge is good, but it should be something of the Holy Spirit. When you ask the Holy Spirit, empower me with these words, empower me with the scriptures. And, and then you go back and you read it and you say, God, empower me, strengthen me, uh, that I may overcome the works of the enemy. That's the, that's the call of God on our lives, right? And we are to minister with signs, miracles, and wonders, right? Expect this whenever we minister. Expect it, right? Uh, we should never feel that okay, uh, I'm not called for healing or I'm not called for deliverance. I'm not called for that. I can just, you know, sing songs or I can be the worship team. No, you and I can expect signs, wonders and miracles to happen uh, when we are ministering in the power of this Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you believe that? Right. Uh, so it's not the, only the pastor's responsibility or the prophet or the healing evangelist. Yes, there's an anointing on their lives as well. But you and I have the same power. Uh, we are empowered the same by the same spirit to do, uh, you know, signs, wonders and miracles. And when we look at the scriptures, when we look at Apostle Paul as well. Right. When we look at his life, uh, he did so many, so many wonders, signs, miracles. Uh, and it became a normal thing in his life. Uh, you know, when we look at the end towards his life, remember that story where uh, the young man was sitting uh, uh, on the window sill, and you know, Paul was going on preaching and preaching, and he fell off, and he uh, and he died. What did Apostle Paul do? He didn't. Uh, say okay let's start a fasting prayer or uh, let's uh, you know do this and that no he said don't worry he's alive he went laid on him the, my, the boy got up and they took him home alive right remember this uh, when he went into uh, the island of malta right uh, he was setting up the fire in his final missionary journey and a snake bit him right what did he do he shook off that snake it didn't do any harm to him. So what now I, I want to be careful now. Don't go searching for snakes and say, okay, uh, you know, don't do that. What I'm trying to say is we are to minister uh, as we minister, expect signs, wonders, and miracles to happen, right? Expect God to move in our midst. When we expect and we, we really prepare and we expect God to move, God will move. Right? God is no respecter of persons. He, he treats all of us the same. So, so uh, keep this in mind. Right, Even as we evangelize, ask God to fill us with power. Compassion, yes, and then fill us with power as well. So let's look at uh, how we minister with compassion. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses 14 to 15. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 14 to 15. Either way, Christ's love controls us since we believe that Christ died for all. We also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive this new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. Thank you, Jafina. So we see here, uh, let's bring context to what Paul is writing here, right? Uh, the word he uses in, in the NKJV, he says, some places he says, compels or the love of Christ constrains us, right? Now, the Corinthian church is a church filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is flowing in the church. People are prophesying. There's gifts of healing and all of that. But there are many practical problems in the church. What is the problems? There's division in the church. Uh, people are, uh, you know, saying, I belong to Paul, I belong to Cephas, I belong to uh, Apollos. Then there are practical problems. People are coming to the communion table and, uh, you know, eating as if it's food, right? And so all these things are happening. Now, as a leader, 
Apostle Paul has all the rights to, you know, uh, get upset and shout at them and say, what are you doing? But he doesn't do that, right? He says, the love of Christ constrains me. It is because of the love of Christ that I am writing this letter to you. I urge you, you know, in some letters, he, he sounds upset, but in the end, he says, you are my children. Uh, to the Galatians, he says, you are my children. Uh, and so much so that if a, if a parent does not correct his children, they are not good parents. So, uh, so he's trying to bring the whole thing of compassion. Apostle Paul showed compassion again on the people. And uh, uh, even though there were plenty of mistakes, plenty of wrongs that was happening in the church, he showed compassion. Now, this is a very important lesson for us to learn, right? Now, the problem is sometimes when we know the truth, the truth should not get to our head in the sense that we should not say, okay, you guys are, you know, uh, worshiping other gods those are not gods, those are this and that. No, we know that is wrong. But even in that, the love of Christ should be shown to the people, right? The more we love people, the more we will be able to uh, minister to them. I'm reminded of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, it was a documentary. I, I forget the name of this uh, person sorry i forget the name but it's a powerful documentary and i read it and i watched it a couple of years back it's about this young man he joins uh, this terrorist organization named hezbollah right and uh, uh, maybe next class i'll just mention the name of that person he's a pastor now but he joins a terrorist organization named hezbollah in the early 60s uh, he was involved in the group he was married uh, but something happened that he had to, you know, uh, uh, move away from that place and get into the city. And the main reason to come into the city, uh, he came into England, I remember. Uh, he, the main reason he came into England was to scout the place around and see what what can be done in the, you know, in England. And uh, so he, uh, you know, just dresses up neatly gets a job at some, you know, these pizza delivery jobs. And he was doing that kind of stuff. And he took up a rented room in an old widow's house. Now, that widow was a believer, right? And every day she would pray, she would, you know, uh, and he would get so upset and shout. And But he would pray, she would pray, she would, uh, you know, share the scriptures with him and, uh, you know, out of compassion and later on uh, she gets to know that he is you know from this organization terrorist organization and all of it uh, but he goes to her and tells her see i know this but i'm still going to let you stay here because i know that god loves you and god wants to change your life and uh, and through that uh, you know through that whole experience he, he writes and he, in the documentary, he says that I've never felt love in this kind of a way. People always, you know, reject us, push us away for who we are. But I never felt love in this kind of way. And through this, first his wife becomes a believer and then he becomes a believer. They had to flee from uh, that place. They went into the USA and then, uh, you know, they became pastors and they started their own ministry there. So. There was not much of preaching of the gospel. It was just an act of love, right? I've just cut short the story, but what I'm trying to say is uh, when we speak to people, when we get opportunities to minister to people, make sure that you minister uh, out of love. Uh, is the book Son of Hamas? Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Divya. Maybe I can check and uh, Next week, I'll, I'll put the book name of the book up because uh, I think there are quite a few testimonies on this, but I want to make sure I give you the right one. So, yeah. So ministering out of compassion is powerful, right? It's powerful. Uh, I remember this one time uh, we were in uh, Bangalore, in the city of Bangalore, long back, maybe, maybe about five, eight years ago, or uh, we were giving out tracts. Uh, me and another friend of mine we were giving out tracks, and uh, this person took the track. He crushed it, and he threw it on my face. And I said, "Okay." At that moment, I was so upset. 
I said, hey, what is this? You know, you, you're doing this in, this, in Bangalore, in the city of Bangalore. You need to be more respectful and all of it. And I went home. I was so upset. Right? Uh, and I was praying. I said, God, how can he do that? You know, how can he just crush it and throw it on me? If he didn't want it, he could just give it to me. Um, but the Lord taught me something that day. He took me to that verse in Romans, which says that while this is love, uh, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that, that verse really became a revelation, right? That Jesus loves them. And now here I am upset and hating them, right? And so it, it just changed my whole perspective of how to minister. So I remember later on just going back and it happened a couple of times. There's another time this guy was, you know, uh, on the streets and uh, I gave him a track. He took out his, you know, lighter and he burnt it in front of me. I don't know if this happens to people, but I don't know why it happens to me, but he burnt it in front of me. And, um, uh, and you know, I, I was almost getting upset, but I remember telling God, God, help me to love this person because you love this person. And uh, after burning the whole thing, he went away. But he came back that way, right? Uh, I, I didn't have anything in my heart. I said, God, it's okay. It's all right. Just touch him and uh, maybe you can use him for your glory. But he came back. He was upset with me. He said, why are you doing this? I said, I'm just doing it because what you are doing, I have done that before. And I began to share my testimony and share the gospel. Uh, he said, can I talk to you? And then we went into this, you know, there was this snooker parlor. We went into the snooker parlor. I began to talk to him. Uh, and I, and I, and I, you know, just sharing the gospel with him. He talked about how he lost his mother at a young age. His father abandoned him and how he was filled with hate. And I just a simple two minute gospel. I just shared about what Jesus did. He was crying. He was weeping uh, in the snooker parlor. He, you know, he broke up with his girlfriend or something. Uh, but then we, you know, prayed. We finished praying. He said, I'm a new person. He became a believer at that moment. He said, okay, I'm going to change my life. He went. I, he, he said, I want to join a Bible college. I said, no, you finish your studies. Then you join your Bible college. So he joined a Bible college. And now uh, he's a pastor in the church in Hyderabad. So, uh, so you know. Things can happen, right? When you minister out of compassion, right? Compassion is the core of our gospel. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse one to eight. Could one of us please read that? First Thessalonians chapter two, one to eight. First Thessalonians chapter 2. You yourself know, dear brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not a failure. You know how badly we had been treated at Philippi just before we came to you and how much we suffered there. Yet our God gave us the courage to declare his good news to you boldly, in spite of great opposition. So you can see we were not preaching with any desire or impure motives or trickery. For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Never once did we try to win you with flattery, as you well know. And God is our witness that we were not pretending to be your friends just to get your money. As for human price, we have never sought it from you or anyone else. Right. Thank you, uh, Jafina. So we see that Paul is writing to the Thessalonians. He's confirming his ministry, saying, see, we did not become friends with you just so that we can get some things out of you. Now, the Thessalonian church was a church which was, uh, uh, you know, when Paul was in Corinth, they were sending gifts to Paul, right? Because he was having a tough time in Corinth. So they were sending gifts. Those gifts could be money, clothes, and all of it. So Paul is writing back and saying, now, uh, uh, you know, we... The reason that we came to you was not so that, you know, we can receive gifts and, uh, you know, live this uh, life of, uh, you know, uh, just enjoy what you are blessing us with. We thank God for it. But we came because we are approved of God and we came because we had compassion on you. 
we had love and we still love you. And that's why we want to minister uh, out of love. So, so chapter three uh, talks about this power and love. So uh, even as we get opportunities, right? Remember to speak and minister in power and love. Now, just because I've shared testimonies of you know things that happen in my life, there are times when I have failed miserably, right? I have failed. I have failed wherein you know um, well, I've tried to minister the gospel. It didn't work, right? So I'm not saying that every time it works, right? Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it happens immediately. Uh, sometimes it happens over a course of you know a continual follow up. Uh, so remember that even as we you know go through all these uh, opportunities that god gives us uh, ask god to empower you to fill you with love remember what paul writes to the corinth, corinth uh, to the corinthians he says we may have all these gifts right prophecies word of knowledge um, you know speaking in tongues and all these amazing gifts first corinthians 13 but paul is saying if you have all of this, but if you do not have love, it's of no use. It's just sound, right? So, so remember that even as we, God has called us to minister and as we, you know, God gives us opportunity, remember that, yes, we may know everything, right? Once we finish our course here, we may know a lot, uh, but remember, that we are to also minister in love. Love is, you know, the foundation of why we share the gospel. Amen. Right? Anybody have any questions, any thoughts you want to share uh, before we go ahead to the next chapter? Okay. So shall we go on to the next chapter, chapter four? Yes. Okay, I'm going to ask you. Yes, Pastor. Uh, okay, I'm going to ask you a few questions, right? Uh, we go to chapter four, overcoming inhibitions. Now, when we say the word inhibitions means things that hinder us, right? Uh, now, we, we all have some inhibitions, right? Uh, hesitations to share Jesus. Right, so I'm going to leave it open now. I want to hear from maybe some of you. What are some of the inhibitions that you feel you have uh, in sharing the gospel? Right now, feel free. Don't worry. Right, my I had plenty of inhibitions. I will share after you all. Uh, but this is just so that we learn together. What are some of the inhibitions or the hesitations uh, that you had? Uh, while well, you know, well, when you got an opportunity to share Jesus, now this is a classroom setting, so don't worry, this is not going to go out of your uh, classroom. Uh, this is a safe place, so go ahead and share. Maybe a few of us can share. What are some of the inhibitions that you have faced? Go ahead, Alan. Uh, Sophia. Alan has left, raised his hand first. So can I go? Okay. Go ahead, Alan. So one of the inhibitions I faced was uh, while sharing the gospel with friends was I was worried about how our relationship would change with that person. Yes, very true, very true. That's a perfectly honest and, you know, it's, it's a true thing. Even I had the same thing, right? Uh, let's hear from someone else. Yes, they, uh, Joash had uh, wanted to say something. Yes, go ahead, Joash. Yes, sir. Fear, like uh, fear of what people think of you, or uh, like fear of messing up. Like I've faced that personally a lot. Okay, okay. Fear of what people will think of you, and fear of you know messing up while delivering your you know while sharing the gospel with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Alan, where are you from? Is it okay if you can mention where which place are you from? I'm from Bangalore. Okay, Joash. Bangalore. Bangalore. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Divya. Yeah, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, so uh, one thing that um, uh, inhibits me, I would uh, say, like, uh, based on the experiences here, 
Mm, it's all about uh, the different, you know, religious uh, philosophies people will be having. Like, I may be ignorant of their doctrines, right? So we had a couple of experiences where we'll be, uh, you know, evangelized by Mormons. And we really don't know how to, you know. Uh, so the first time when we had that interaction, I was trying to find the difference between uh, their uh, Bible and a uh, Christian Bible. So I felt, oh, there is, uh, they do not believe in the grace of God. But the second time when uh, we had this uh, same experience, uh, we, I'm feeling like I don't know enough to, you know, help them understand. And uh, ultimately, I couldn't, uh, you know, share the truth, the gospel, but I just prayed that they may know the truth. Uh, and they gave their tract and all. So I was just going through their track and it looks very similar. Uh, so that ignorance, right, to uh, how to tell them what's true. Yeah, thank you. So, so it was more of, uh, it's more of a theological aspect. So you, that is one of the inhibitions that you're facing. Okay. Uh, anybody else want to share? Yes, go ahead, Rafina. Yeah. Uh, when I first started uh, telling people about Jesus, one of the things that I felt was, I'm not perfect, like, I'm not so responsible, I'm not Jesus Christ, I'm not so perfect like him, he's so holy and he's great, but I'm very young and I have did a lot of things which, are not supposed, which I'm not supposed to do. And as I learned more about Christ, as I learned who I am in Christ, my perspective was changed. He gave me a new life. I am born again. And that changed me. But when I first started, it was like a deep scar in me telling me that you cannot do this. You are imperfect. Like you are not perfect enough to do this. So that's okay. what I want to do. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jafina. Yeah. So all of you uh, shared very genuine inhibitions, right? And I would say I went through all four of them, right? All four of them. Right. Uh, but as we go on in this lesson, I'll give you a few. Let's look at how we can overcome. We look at the inhibitions and we will also look at how we can overcome them. Right. Uh, and I will also pick up on a few of what you all have mentioned so that we can, you know, target those inhibitions as well. So chapter four, let's look at overcoming inhibitions. Right. Uh, I'm sure all of us also, you know, have inhibitions. Right. Uh, so first one, not knowing what to say. So Divya didn't know what to say. Right. Uh, so let's look at it. The fear, this fear is because of our ignorance about the gospel. That is what to share, what to say and how to share it. Right. Uh, here's one thing learn practical things on how to share Jesus. Now, remember that we cannot know everything, right? We cannot know everything. I don't know everything, right? Now, just because I don't know everything, that is not going to stop me from evangelizing, right? Uh, uh, for example, you know, uh, one of the things that I personally do is uh, if it's somebody that I've met one of you know i try to ask them a lot of questions right now it's okay to not know everything right uh, even as we go on to uh, the next year you will get a subject called apologetics and then the final year you'll get world religions where you'll talk about you'll study about world religions as well and how to defend the gospel and apologetics so that's going to help you but don't wait let me finish my third year and then start evangelizing no the fear of ignorance is only a fear, right? And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind, right? So these are verses that we can declare, right? Now, it does not mean that we don't prepare, right? I, I remember uh, when I was... Uh, uh, wanting to share the gospel with people, I would stand in front of the mirror and I would do a role play to myself, right? So in one one five minutes, I would act like an angry person. The other next five, next encounter will be with an old man or the next encounter will be with a working professional. So I would try all of this. 
And then, uh, you know, I remember I would record it. I would do an audio recording and say, why did I even say this? It was not required. You know, so practice and prepare, right? Uh, don't worry about only the theological thing. That's why we, remember, we looked at chapter one. What is it? The message of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. So, Divya, if you only share the message of the cross, you know, people will say, hey, uh, uh, so the Mormon comes and says, you know, uh, this is what we believe in. This is what, and you may feel, oh, I don't know this. I said, okay, I don't know it, but I know one thing. What is it? The message of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. Right? And so we can go and say, hey, thank you for sharing about your belief. But here's what I believe in. And here's what happened. When I read this, you know, it, the, the word of God came alive in me. As a sinner, I, you know, I, I believe that when I read this and I put my hands into Christ, Christ cleansed me from all unrighteousness. And you're giving that gospel, just a two, three minute gospel. Remember, it is stronger and more powerful than any kind of arguing or defense that you're giving. A simple two or a five minute gospel. So uh, never downplay that. That's why we looked at it at the first chapter itself. The message of, of, of the cross is much more than enough, right? And on that message, you build found, we build foundations, right? So be ready to give a defense, prepare yourself. People will ask tough questions, right? Uh, you know, I remember this, uh, uh, this person came and asked me, she's, uh, from a different faith. Um, uh, no, she's not from a different faith, uh, but I'm, I'm going to say this. Uh, uh, nothing against them, right? Uh, uh, but uh, uh, this woman was a Catholic, and uh, she said, we believe in everything. Uh, we speak in tongues. Uh, I said, that's wonderful. That's great. Uh, so she said, why are you all against this? So I just asked her. I said, God, how do I minister to this person? What, what can I do? And I don't know all the history of what all happened in the Catholic Church and all of that, so I didn't want to go there. But one question I asked her, so you do, you love the scripture and she speaks in tongues, gift of healing, she prays for people, people get healed, right? And so she, she she's quite well known in the charismatic Catholic movement. But I asked her one question. I asked her, is Christ the all-sufficient one in your life? Is he, is he sufficient for you? So she said, yes. Okay. So if Christ is the sufficient one for you, so you pray only to Jesus? She said, no. Then I said, then Christ is not the sufficient, all sufficient one for you. And it opened her mind. She said, how can you say that? She got upset. I said, you think about it. You sit and think about it. If you're praying to somebody else other than Christ, that means Christ is not the sufficient one, right? He's not the all-sufficient one in your life. And then, you know, uh, we would send messages uh, across and uh, a couple of uh, months back, about six months back, uh, you know, she came out of that movement and, uh, she, you know, she's truly sitting and reading the word of God. Now, I didn't know anything about the Catholic movement, the whole, you know, history and all. I didn't use any of that. Just the gospel. I just said, you know, for me, Christ was the all-sufficient one, right? So not knowing what to say is a genuine thing. But we can ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, remind me. He's a reminder. Bring to remembrance things. It could be a simple question. It could be a simple word or a scripture, and that one thing can, you know, penetrate into a person's heart. Uh, there are plenty of examples where uh, I've shared with Mormons. Now, I don't know much about the Mormons, uh, but there are three of them who, are, uh, who had come to my house uh, who are Mormons, but they left and now they are pastors. Uh, one is in Delhi, one is in Gujarat. Uh, they're pastors of started their own churches. So what I'm trying to say is, not knowing what to say should not hinder us from preaching, the, sharing the gospel. Even if it is something that is uh, something very theological, you can say, hey, I don't know that. Right? Uh, sometimes, you know, in this day and age, if we say, I don't know, 
people may mock us or uh, you know it's okay to say i don't know nothing wrong in it right uh, if you ask me how in the book of numbers what is there sometimes i say i don't know numbers has lot of numbers what numbers i don't know it's okay if you don't know right uh, but what i'm trying to say is don't come to a place where you say okay let me know everything and then i will share the gospel no the message of the cross is more than enough for you to share the gospel people will come and say ask questions oh where is jesus or what do you think about this you may not know the answer say i don't know about it but i can find out i can let you know but this is what i believe in the cross and christ crucified and i believe that he rose again from the dead just a gospel which is the power of god right so not knowing what to say is definitely an inhibition i went through it uh, but the more we uh, depend on the crux of the gospel uh, the message of the cross all these other things will come secondary prepare yourself practice uh, and then you will be able to give a good defense now here's the thing i remember you know wanting to always minister and share the gospel with people but i was sitting at home and i thought to myself and one day the holy spirit said you keep praying the whole day and you want to share the gospel nobody is going to come to your house you got to go out right and so even as we prepare we need to practice it right we need to go out we need to step out and do what god is calling us to do right my time is up uh we will pick up from overcoming inhibitions from next week right uh if you have questions uh you can always put it up on the stream as well we will look to uh answer them as well so let's just close with a word of prayer right father we want to thank you for this wonderful day lord we thank you for the session lord from what we learned today that we are called to minister your word in power and in compassion and i pray god that you fill us with your love that the love of christ will be the root out of everything that we do that it will uh it will flow out of love oh god and we thank you god for giving each one of us the opportunity uh to go ahead and make disciples for your kingdom you have commissioned each one of us you've empowered each one of us lord and lord even as we look at as we've looked at inhibitions lord lord we thank you that we come to your presence not by works but by the grace of jesus christ thank you for your wisdom thank you for your understanding thank you for your power that you have given us lord we pray lord that you will continue to teach us through your word and through your scriptures lord and lord we pray that we will also learn to walk in your ways oh god we pray a blessing over each and every student lord as they study and prepare themselves lord uh, may your holy spirit empower empower them and use them for your glory we give you all the praise and glory in jesus name we pray amen amen amen, amen. amen. thank you so much everyone uh, have a blessed week ahead i will see you next week god bless you all god bless